there's a secret about this star. The star presentation isn't really just about the star of Bethlehem. It's really about a much larger thing that begins at Christ's birth. That's the star. But it's also accompanied by the beginning of a celestial poem. The woman clothed in the sun with the new moon birthed at her feet and capped by Christ's passing on a day when there's a lunar eclipse, when the moon is again at the foot of the Virgin. At this time, a full moon, a full life, blotted out in blood. The star presentation came together uh, in pieces. I had something interesting to show my Sunday school class, but it wasn't what we're doing today, because uh, more research brings more knowledge, and the story gets wider and wider. When I got a letter in the mail, it was actually an article by a PhD astronomer that took the position that the Star of Bethlehem was a real historical event. Well, it resonated immediately. I'm a lawyer, I'm not an astronomer, but I was braced by the idea that, that Christ's star was real. So I downloaded software from the web that allows me, through with my laptop computer, to animate the skies over the Mideast 2,000 years ago. And I'd go out on the, the deck after dark and tapped away for months and found the things in the article and found a whole lot more, too. And as I began to find more and more and more, I began to be, not frightened, but a sense of awe came to me. To the point where I realized that the star was not an isolated thing. That the star is a piece of what I now view as, as, as celestial poetry. The woman clothed in the sun that John told us of, with the, the moon birthed at her feet. So descriptive, so beautiful, in the sky at the same time as all these other events that are happening. And then to find that there's a counterpart event that the moon is back at the foot of the Virgin on the day of Christ's death. But now it's a full moon, blotted out in blood. That's the one that blew me away. When I found that, when I turned on the constellations that evening out on the deck, I wept. I had to weep. I said, my God, what did you do? Because he'd written this thing in the sky for me and for all of us. Here's why I think the star's important. I think there are a lot of reasons it's important. First, it does say, it does show, it is almost overwhelming that you can push the scriptures extremely hard and they hold up. And it speaks to people who don't believe scripture because I've presented to many non-believers and they look at scripture in a new light once they've seen the star. It makes them wonder. I think people need to see the star though for another reason. For many of us, modern men, we don't feel genuine awe unless we're really terrified of something. But this is something that produces a godly awe, a reverence, a new understanding of sovereignty, a conviction that God is truly running the universe. From the beginning of time, he has run the universe. The reason why I know it matters is because I've seen the results. I've seen students in the halls after the presentation arguing about Jesus Christ and his claims. Students who would never have had those discussions unless they'd seen the star. I've been to Albania. I've presented to people there who don't speak my language and found out only afterwards that people are accepting Christ all through the, through the audience because they were so moved by the thing that God had done to announce Messiah. Uh, it was an eye opener for me and I realized that the star definitely was not limited to the U.S. or even English speakers, but instead it was for all people everywhere. And I realized I'm, 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 I'm on top of something that's massive. We gotta go to the world. This is happening so fast. It's happening in just the last week. So far, we have uh, translations of the star website going for Spanish, German, Portuguese, Russian, Hebrew, Arabic, if I was advertising, that would be different, but I'm not. I'm just taking emails and answering the phone. It's been life-changing for me. It's to the point now where I'm making some tough choices, I'm coming to some tough places in my life where I may realize I just can't do everything anymore. And one thing I have to do is the star. I may have to drop the practice of law. It's a thing I think about and pray about all the time. 
I don't know where I'm going to end up on that. Most of the stories are too painful and too current. You know, if I do quit law, where will my money come from? Would I do that in any, anyway? Yeah, I'd do it anyway. Why would he choose a non-astronomer? Why would he choose a lawyer? Why would he choose me, of all people, to do this work? But I've been told by so many people that I'm doing the right thing, and the response has been so stunning and so unexpected that I know I'm supposed to continue with it. Here's what the Star Project needs now. It needs partners. This is a project I can't do by myself. And God doesn't intend me to do it by myself. I need help. I need people to help financially. I need people who are stout enough and have enough vision to agree with me, this has to go to the world. This is not something that we need to learn about and put on the shelf. This is something we need to send to the world. This whole series of events is about God accomplishing his purpose, which he established before the beginning of time. Before he threw the universe into existence, he had to know when he would come and when he would pass. That's the message I think everyone needs to hear around the world, in their own tongues. <laughs>